Good morning. Good morning. Happy Monday. It is July 31st, the last day of July. It is a gorgeous day in Ramsey, Minnesota this morning. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> what? You're going to tell us something. I am? Yeah. What am I going to tell you? I don't know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm not going to tell us anything. He's silly. I don't know not then. We were supposed to say good morning and uh, oh, well, talk good about morning. the day. And oh. <laughs> see, we, this we didn't is, plan it, so. We I, never plan it. Well, look usually, at me you got lost. <laughs> usually you got something to say. Oh, well, I'm awake. Yes. I just don't like it. It's your, you're out of camera more. There, I like that. I like it when you're in the center. Edie is supposed to both be in the screen. <laughs> All right. So, it is Monday, July 31st, and the title of the devotional this morning is My Love Will Guide You. This is a good one. I sent this to our pastor at Hope Fellowship because I thought it was a good one for all pastors. Yes, and especially for him because that seems to be his mode of leadership or whatever. But anyway, I will pray. Cheryl will read. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and we thank you for all you do for us. We ask you pour out your blessings on us as you always do. Pour out your spirit on us and give us the words to say. We thank you that that's always available to us and we thank you that your love will guide us. And we thank you that you love us and that you express that love in so many ways. <clears throat> in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, Chris. Hi, Kathy. Boy, I'm missing out. I know I have your the sissies fear are of missing out. <laughs> your sissies are, are in Oshkosh together, and and uh, we'll yeah. have to do a video call after they, this. They probably, morning, good morning, Nancy. Nancy. Yeah, they so, probably have coffee and everything. Yeah, I know we have coffee. All of the Kathy's in Oshkosh. Chrissy's there. Mom's there. All the Aikens are there, but us. But we'll all be together on Saturday in Iowa yeah. at the wedding. So we so, found out yesterday that our pastor's from Iowa, so yeah, I, he can't uh, be all that bad. I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, yesterday we had a really good service. Yes, we did. Um, and uh, it we was... Were, go ahead. The about, music... Yeah. Uh, the music was wonderful, uh, yeah. worship time. The um, sermon was about relationships, and it really kind of dug deep into my heart and made me think hard. And when you you feel like the pastor is speaking to you specifically, <laughs> it's like, how does he know all this? You know it's the Holy Spirit working through you through him so anyway we're kind of continuing on with the relationship mode but we're talking about our heavenly father's relationship with it, us and uh, he didn't mention this specifically but we we'd like to say that our relationship with the father is what makes all our other relationships work exactly and that was the whole mode of his mm -hmm. sermon so anyway you guys are going to like this one. It's called, My Love Will Guide You. Do you love me, my child? Is there a passion in your heart to do my will and follow my path? All of heaven comes to your aid when you set your heart to pursue me. My ears are tuned to the sound of your voice and the movement of your heart toward me. Many on earth will value your life by what you do your influence, your possessions, your ministry. But I value you in the measure by my love. My love will be your guide when you do what I ask you of my servants. Matthew, when you do what I asked of my servant, Matthew, come follow me. As you walk with me, our hearts will beat as one. My pleasure rests upon you and you will begin to learn of my ways. My guidance is an expression of my love. 
Because I love you, I will set you on high where none can hinder or harm you. Because I love you, I lead you into paths and go before you. My love will guide you, my child. You know, he specifically mentions uh, Jesus calling Matthew there, but mm -hmm. uh, all of the disciples, he said, come follow me. Yeah. Uh, in some form or fashion, maybe not those exact words, but, uh, you know, they, uh, they left their nets and they followed him or they, mm -hmm. you know, whatever the... Cast your net. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, he does want us to follow him. And uh, Sher's going to read Psalm 91, 14 through 16, and Psalm 37, 23 through 24. Okay, Psalm 91, 14 through 16. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. In Psalm 37, 23 and 24 says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. Yep. That's good. Yep. That's good so, stuff right so there. So we're, we're to follow him, and he is leading us through love. And mm -hmm. I think yeah, when I was young, and Cheryl, even to a greater extent, looked at God as, uh, and he is a just judge, but not only a just judge he's uh, he wants to lead us and uh, he's unchanging in his spirit mm -hmm. but he uh, he wants to lead us through love he loves us he created us for fellowship with him mm -hmm. and uh, so we always want to remember uh, to not not be in uh, we're, we're to have a rever reverential fear and awe of God, but we're not to fear him like you fear uh, somebody that's out to harm you because we know he's to pro or his plans are to prosper us and not to harm us. When he asks us, or when they post the question in here, do you love me? Is there a passion for you, me in your heart? Mm -hmm. I really like that because it makes you think what is the extent that you will go for him um, through because of love mm -hmm. what is the extent that you will follow him what are you willing to do what are you willing to give up what are you willing how are you willing to walk for the sake of of um, glorifying God. I was thinking about relationships, and this is where relationships comes into it. Um, when, good morning, Jane. When you have a relationship with somebody and you love them, you will do anything for them. Mm -hmm. You will even die for them. And so what, how much greater is it that we're willing to do anything for our Heavenly Father, willing to go anywhere for Him, and even die for our Heavenly Father. And so many times uh, when the Lord asks us to do something, you think in your mind, that's too much. Right. You're asking me to give up too much. You're asking me to, to do too much. You're asking me to go too far. And he kind of will remind you and say, where did I go for you? Where right. did my love what, go for you? I went to the cross for you. Right. What did he give up for us? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, willingly leaves heaven uh, to come down here and suffer all the temptations and pain mm -hmm. of the world and take that all onto himself, even mm -hmm. though he did not deserve it. We deserved it. Mm -hmm. uh, and... And look at it from the Father's point of view. He sent his only son. And 
he was willing to do that and he thought it worth it um, for our salvation so we can uh, live in heaven it is god's desire that every one of us mm -hmm. uh, every person on earth live with heaven in him forever and uh, you know, it's up to us to follow to follow his lead we talk uh, jesus talked about servant leadership Mm -hmm. And that really is where it stems from. It stems from love. As husbands, we are called to love our wives as Christ loved the church. And if we could really get a hold of that and really try and live that out, mm -hmm. and uh, it would do marvelous things in our lives. And, uh, you know, sometimes it is difficult, but uh, when we think about what Jesus did for us, it's not too hard to do something for somebody else. On here they say, many on earth will value your life and what you do and your influence and your possessions and your ministry. Mm -hmm. But he values and treasures our, us by love. Right. He shows us his love. That's what's important the Heavenly Father, what's important to Him is His love. Not about what you have, what you're doing in your ministry, um, who, you're, who you're talking to, or mm -hmm. how high a rank you're at, or, or what your ministry, or whatever your title is. It don't matter. He values you and your love. The world, by your love. The world looks at what we do, and usually what we do to support ourselves and our families. Mm -hmm. And not that that's a bad thing, but uh, first of all, we should value God's love. Yeah. And, and the, if we can show the love of the Father and model Jesus in everything we do, uh, the rest of that stuff will fall into line. Well, and as you grow older, not that we're old or no. anything, but as, as your life progresses, the titles, the roles, the people even, mm -hmm. fall to the wayside. And what is, ha what is important in the end, and that's why we're always stressing that, that titles are, you know, from the world. Right. Um, but God titles us as his child. And we need to we need to think of the title that the Heavenly Father gives right. us, not the title that the world will put on you. To, to put it this way, to personalize this for me, I am not a um, a uh, computer support engineer or whatever that stupid title. long title Operations is. Engineer. Operations engineer. Yeah. Uh, that's what I do. Uh, that's what I do to support myself. But what I am. In my core is I'm a child of God, mm -hmm. a child of the living God, not uh, not something made up, not some idol, but the living God, the, the one true God, the God of mm -hmm. uh, Abraham and and uh, Isaac and Jacob and uh, the Father of Jesus. And, uh, yeah, and well, I want to say what you say that that is for all of us the mm -hmm. equalizer. Right. You know, um, so many people live on a title. Yep. They, they, their goal is set for a certain title, which is nothing. We're not saying there's anything wrong with bettering yourself, setting a high goal, and, and achieving more. We're saying if that goal that you're setting is put, putting aside our Heavenly Father, and taking place of the love we have for our Heavenly Father and what He's calling you, you to do, mm -hmm. then it's wrong. Right. When uh, the people I know in business that, uh, that really have the respect of their peers and their subordinates uh, have that kind of attitude. They don't stand on their title. They stand mm -hmm. on, what can I do for this company and for my fellow employees, or in the case of our owner, the people that work for him. How can I uh, improve their lives and uh, make this company uh, 
do things uh, for the employees, but also for for uh, for the world. And uh, that's the attitude of people I really respect. Mm -hmm. Not so much that you know I'm the vice president of. Yeah. I think we're talking about this. We when we speak of something, it's usually when we have our devotions and we're speaking of stuff, it's usually because we've been had an experience or been mm -hmm. through it or are going through it. And we were or I was, I won't put my husband in the same box as me because it's not fair to do to him. Um living my life with a you know as a title holder and that's where i fell quickly and that's where uh you could sometimes forget where what position you have um with your heavenly father is where he puts you where he sets you and if you get wound up in as a title holder and that's what you're thinking of well i'm the world gave me this title and that's what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And if that's where what your goal is, or that's what's where you think you're only, your only uh, happiness comes from, you quickly learn once you get hurt from that, or once you are pulled off of that position, or whatever the title is, yep. right yep. in life, you realize there's more. You, that that's when you rely on your heavenly father. I, I guess that doesn't make it. Every sense, oh, it but makes I know perfect that. sense. Yeah. Uh, every uh, every one of us, uh, if we gave our life to Christ, uh, is a child of the Most mm -hmm. High God, and He looks at us through the lens of His Son's blood, mm -hmm. and He looks at us all uh, in love. And even if you're not saved, He looks at us in love. Mm -hmm. uh, He's a just God. He's not going to let sinners into heaven, unrepented sinners. He is going to let the rest, you know, those of us that, that uh, gave our life to Christ, uh, we're in. And, mm -hmm. and we shouldn't look at that as the free pass, the get out of uh, jail free card. We should look at that as we've been given a gift. Now, what are we going to do? Right. Perfect. All right. All right, so that's what we got to yeah. say about that. His love, meaning God's love, will guide you. Yes, and if you allow it. Yes, and we yeah. have free will. And we have to use. Uh, we have to. Uh, what's that first line there? Do you love me, my child? Is there a passion in your heart to do my will and follow my path? So we should have a passion to do the will of God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it should grieve our spirit uh, as we have the Holy Spirit in us if we get outside of his will. Yeah. So uh, we have some prayers this morning. Mm -hmm. uh, let's just get into it. We'll read them as we go. Okay. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and we thank you for all you do for us. We ask that you, uh, that you, we come to you with some prayers petitions and we know they're all in your will and we ask that for speedy manifestation of your answer to these prayers and petitions uh, first of all we pray for Robert uh, Truckee that uh, Lord you've designed those lungs you can heal them you can uh, get him new ones medical or miracle Lord we just uh, want Robert uh, to have a healing in his body we thank you that's available to him and it's bought and paid for. We pray for Tom's mom and dad today, Lord, that you heal her. Thank you, Lord, for waking her up in a bright and shiny mood. I've already spoke to her, Lord, today. And we just thank you for giving her life and the breath to breathe the life, Lord. And we thank you for his dad and his, his good, positive attitude, Lord. And we pray that you just give them both strength every day. We pray for Jeremy and Acacia, and uh, Lord, bless that union. Help them to focus on you first and then on each other. And we thank you that as it was uh, from, from the beginning, you have had for a man and a woman to join in holy matrimony. Mm -hmm. and, and 
we just thank you that that's available to them and uh, we look forward with hope to to everything that they're going to go through and uh, not that it will always be easy but uh, that you will be there to guide them mm -hmm. uh, we ask for traveling mercies for ourselves and for everybody else that's traveling uh, to Osage, Iowa, uh, Friday or Saturday or whenever they're coming. And we, uh, we thank you that traveling mercies are ours in the name of your son. Okay, you can read that. All right. Uh, so Jane's niece, Tina, it's the last chemo, praise the Lord. The rest of the way through another medication, and uh, Susan, Susan needs, prayer. needs prayer, and Patricia's, Patricia's sister. sister for cancer. Okay. All right, we'll just go pray for cancer. Heavenly Father, cancer is not of you. Cancer is a name, and it must bow to the name of your Son. Mm -hmm. And we we thank you that healing is available to us, that it's bought and paid for on the cross, and. By his stripes we are healed mm -hmm. and we thank you for that Lord for, for anyone in the world that uh, that is struggling or fighting against cancer know that the battle's been won in your name mm -hmm. and and we thank you for that Lord and we pray for Souls Harbor in Kenosha that's the church we're praying for this week uh, Pastor Alan, Alan Spencer mm -hmm. and uh, the worship team there his wife Kathy and everybody involved in that uh, church they, they have a special place in our heart and uh, we thank you that that work was started many years ago uh, and uh, continues to this day we pray for a family camp North Central District starts this week Lord um, we pray that you touch hearts the souls are saved Lord that they have a great weather and uh, have a really good time together, Lord, and we pray that you just uh, change lives this week for people. We pray for the Nicaragua missions trip uh, for John and Chrissy and Ben and Katie mm -hmm. uh, as they travel to Nicaragua along with that whole team from Hillside Assembly. And we thank you that they will have opportunity to do what you told them to do, mm -hmm. uh, to go into the world and spread the gospel to the nations. Mm -hmm give them opportunity to do just that and not just when they're down there but on the way down on the way back and uh, let them let them model Christ in what they do on this trip and all the time and we thank you that they have this opportunity in Jesus name amen amen and amen amen and amen all right amen and them <laughs> 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 There's a, a comedian that talks about his uh, granddaughter, and uh, when she was really young, she couldn't say amen. She didn't understand it, so she said, all the men. All the men, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which I thought was cute. Yeah. yeah, you have to see the whole thing. You have to see the whole thing, yeah. but yeah. All it, the men. The, the little girl was a prayer warrior. And yeah, pray for all the men. Yeah. All right, love you guys. See you tomorrow. All right. Bye. Bye now. <laughs>